Here we go. Hello and welcome to Collapse Club. How are we to live in the time of collapse? I'm David Baum in Seattle. Today I am with Nando, Fernando Garcia Ferrero from Spain. Hello, Nando. Hello, David. Thank you for being with me today. At a certain point, you became aware of the prospect of collapse and you understood that you wanted to change your life. Can you tell us about what brought you to the point of feeling that collapse required a response from you? Hmm. It's a long story, but I'll try to keep, to make it short. Uh, probably dates back 12 years with this article in the New York Times. The end of the world is near. And suddenly I realized, you know, I learned about peak oil. I learned about climate change. I learned about those things, you know, and I realized in my guts that uh, we were in a blip, that our civilization was in a blip, you know, and, and, and that was that was very emotional for me. Uh, and my first reaction was, of course, run to the supermarket and, <laughs> and prepare. And then a couple of months later, you realize that that's completely futile. Uh, I stroll with that. I, I spend a few years with that, trying to forget, going to business as usual, trying to forget that is what, what we most do. And uh, the second uh, attitude, you know, trying to do my, my bit, you know, by recycling, cycling, going vegan, etc., etc. But at one point, uh, I found that was incompatible with my heavy uh, job. You know, I was a, an executive in the European Commission, and I it took too much of my energy and attention. And I decided to early retire when I was 60 to devote my time to the exploration, exploration of collapse and what it means. So in a nutshell, and that's been three years ago. The exploration that you talk about is uh where has it led you what have you discovered hmm many things i'll start with the first one uh, i also had next to collapse a very deep interest in death uh, all my life i've been interested in death but probably for the last couple of years, more so, I spent time studying death, uh, and I noticed that the uh, emotions and feelings and thoughts uh, around death are totally applicable to the situation of collapse. You know, it's, it's a kind of an ending. It's a predicament. You know, death. I mean, it's a predicament. The, the difference between death and collapse is that nobody discusses that death is a predicament. You know, no, nobody. So far, I've met uh, who think that there is a, a solution to death, whereas collapse, there are some people who still think there are solutions to it, you know. And um, I've been recently, for instance, exploring uh, the five remembrances. I'm, I'm currently following a program, A Year to Live, based on the, on the work of uh, Stephen Levine. And, and part of this program, which is a full year program, which consists on, on living this year as if it was the last year of my life. So by, by 31st of December, I, will, I should be dead, uh, uh, virtually, so to say. And one of the things we've been exploring is the five remembrances. And I don't know whether you're familiar with them. They apply to death, but they apply also to collapse. You know, well, the first one is, is I am of the nature of growing old. There is no way to escaping growing old. Uh, so that's 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 a fact you know people die earlier but i mean if not we grow old second one is i'm of the nature of have of, to have ill health you know there is no way to escape having ill health sooner or later i am of the nature to die uh, there is no way to escape death you know i'm of the nature of losing uh, all the things and all the people i love etc so those are the five remembrances and uh, the work is to stay with them, you know, and, and to, to reconcile with them uh, as a way of uh, avoiding denial, you know, and, and as a way of, of trying to live in the, most, in the most intense way. You know, part of the things that Stephen Levine says in his book and we are doing in the program is that the work is to complete 
your is the completion of your life before your its dissolution you know uh, many people including myself you know have lived lived very very superficially you know and and, and the idea of death is, is, a, is a bit of a wake up to live more intensely uh, and, and more fully and with collapse the same thing happens so that's one of the places where i've arrived uh, by exploring collapse so by overcoming denial you live more fully in the current moment is is that the idea that's the idea indeed that's the idea and the way to do it and this has been a realization quite recent as well i'm, I'm afraid is through the body rather than through the mind you know I've, I've, I've discovered something that i had read in the past you know with my mind the importance of connecting with the body in order to to be fully in in the world you know uh, again you know when you start thinking about this you realize that in in our life is full of people full of places full of events and that's one way to understand our life but probably our life is mostly the experience we have of those people those places and those events you know that's the real life you know that that we have and that life is lived in our body you know and this uh, disconnect with the body is something that uh, for for people who have worked in a big organization like me was uh, what was you were supposed to be doing you know you were supposed to bring your mind to the office but not necessarily your body even if your body was shouting you know your your belly was shouting or your or your heart was tight or whatever so the the exploration of uh, living in this world with the body is a very important one you know in in a way the body the body is the expression of of of, of the land you know of, of of nature you know we are we are we are part of that you know our, our 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 body is composed of the elements of nature and in a way it's only through connecting with that that we can live more intensely are there particular practices that you engage in to uh, live in your body yes uh well i'm practicing yoga every single day now uh, i started with yoga something like 10 years ago and i was practicing from time to time now i'm doing it every day and the uh, practice of yoga is a particularly powerful one to connect with your body you know because you feel its limits you feel you feel the stretches you feel everything and is is a good a good way to prepare for connecting the mind and the body which is which is the the idea of yoga i've also started recently with the uh, qigong uh, and that is a, a leap of faith you know because uh, as a as a, as a Westerner, you know, I'm very much into science, into objective things, you know. And when people start telling you about energies, you know, and chakras and uh, flows of things, you know, the other day we were we were in a practice whereby I was supposed to visualize my bones and a golden light coming through them, you know, through the toes uh, up to the head, you know, and nourishing my bones, you know. And I I I surprised myself believing that something which would have been utterly impossible a few years back you know the idea of believing that there is an energy that there are these channels that there is this these connections there is this chi that you can simply uh, capture with your hands by doing like this and then you put it in your belly so that's the second one and the third one is the belly you know uh, working with the tummy is very important you know and there is a particular practice which is very simple uh, which is simply putting your right hand on your or your navel and your left hand behind and start noticing what happens there and things happen so those are part of the things I'm doing other than taking cold showers in the morning which really you feel your body I tell you given uh, the fact of death and given the fact of collapse why is it important for you to be engaging in these practices of wisdom, enlightenment, whatever it is you're finding? Why does it matter given death and collapse? Hmm. I suppose because uh, 
I am fascinated by mysteries, and I think this is the title you wanted to give to this talk. You know, mysteries is things you don't know or you don't understand or you cannot explain. You know, and uh, I think uh, the exploration of death and collapse uh, prompts a, a journey into who are we? What are we? What is this? You know, what is this universe? What are we doing here? I know. I know anatomically that I am an ape and I'm fascinated with prehistory and I, I can connect very well back to the Australopithecus, et cetera, et cetera. So that I understand, you know. But before that, I mean, I was a bacteria, you know, and, one, and I'm a living being and I'm a human, you know. So, so this kind of, 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 uh, of deep questions, uh, who, which have a very difficult answer, is something that, that is prompted by the exploration of death and collapse. And uh, ultimately... Uh, they lead you beyond the, the mere uh, conceptual exploration into the emotional exploration. What I was telling you before, you know, our life, more than the people and the places and the events that, that, that happen to you, is the experience, you know, the experience, the inner, the inner experience that you're having of those, you know, the awareness, you know, your physical sensations, your emotions, your feelings. And uh, the exploration of death and collapse has led me to simplify quite a lot because it's so complex and 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 and, and so difficult to 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 really to really comprehend or understand that basically I came to the conclusion that it, it all boils down to two basic emotions, you know, fear and love, you know. And, and I've been in groups now where we we do the checking, asking people, okay, what's your percentage today of of fear versus love, you know, because in 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 a way. In a way, those are the two predominant ones. And the more fear, the less love. The more love, the less fear, you know. So the idea is to, to, to do these practices in order to try and, and, and appease, so to say, the fear and the despair and the rage uh, provoked by, 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 by the, the non-understanding of, 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 of what is going on and try to bring in more more love more more solace more more serenity so that i can be more helpful in in these times you know you talk about deep questions with difficult answers have you found answers or i'm sorry that's not the right question you you talk about how important the body is in contrast to the mind and I wonder, does there come a point where finding answers to questions is is not relevant anymore? And what's relevant is where it leads you in terms of what you do in your body and in the world and with other people. Definitely. Definitely. There are wonderful books uh, presenting hypotheses of answers. You know, I'm, I'm like many people in deep adaptation. I'm, I'm, I'm with my, 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 my gay Christ uh, now with the latest, the matter we think, you know, these, these, these wonderful bricks, you know, uh, fascinating, you know, and, 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 and conceptually is, is, is very interesting to try and make sense of, you know, how the way I see the world is, is very influenced by my left hemisphere, et cetera, et cetera. But ultimately, uh, by spending too much time in the mind, you're not spending time in life. You know, I, I, I was in a in a in a training in a retreat a couple of uh, months ago now with the with the with the French equivalent of Joanna Macy. Uh, you know, her name is Claire Carré, is an amazing woman, a friend of Joanna's, uh, and um, she's uh, she was talking about, you know, she said something, I don't know whether I can translate that, it was in French, translate that into English. She was saying that in the French Revolution, uh, the, 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 the people were chopping off heads, uh, bodies instead of heads, you know. So the idea that since the French Revolution, we've left the body behind, you know, and uh, we are trying to make sense of everything only with the mind, you know. And very often, you get to a much more spiritual uh, understanding of reality through the body, because in the end, spirituality is connection, you know, and 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 the mind ten tends to disconnect us, even if we find a wonderful explanation still in the mind. Whereas with the body, we can connect and we can we can be part. So in a way, is the mystical is the mystical approach in 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 religion, or is 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 the is is is, is the, the 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 Eastern approach to to spirituality? You know, connecting through the body. You know, rather than through through the mind. So yeah, there is there is a way, but that's relatively new to to me. I'm 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 only exploring that, and uh, 
feeling it, frankly, feeling it. You mentioned McGilchrist. That is Ian McGilchrist. He's a philosopher and a psychiatrist. Uh, there is a playlist of his videos on this channel website. So if you look below this video, you will see a playlist of Ian McGilchrist presentations. Uh, one of the things he talks about is a differentiation between the hemispheres of the brain. It is the right hemisphere of the brain that experiences the world as new. The world is present. We experience it that way in one part of our brain, one part of our mind. The other side, the left side, represents, represents. It is a schematic arrangement, like the map to the territory. And the trap that uh, modern society has got itself into, says McGilchrist, is that we are trying to live in the map instead of living in the territory. And what I hear you talking about, perhaps, is a journey from the map to the territory. Quite. Indeed, in, in the first few pages of, of his latest uh, book, The Matter With Things, he, he, he presents things, you know, very much like, like you were saying. He says that, that, the, that the left hemisphere apprehends reality, whereas the right hemisphere comprehends reality, you know. And in that sense, uh, I, I think the, 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 the right hemisphere is much more holistic, you know, looks at the bigger picture, you know. Uh, which is what we need in order to make sense uh, of, of a predicament like ours. Whereas the left, uh, the left hemisphere is looking into bits and pieces, you know, so much CO2, so many species disappeared, etc., etc. That's, I, I tried that, you know, and I didn't get anywhere, you know. So I'm, I'm understanding now that you need to move to some, some other place and probably privilege a bit more the, the, the right hemisphere and the body in order to to find my place in 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 the world plus plus uh, surrendering to to faith you know uh, i think i've given up hope of course like 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 many others in in deep adaptation and uh i think maybe maybe faith is a good replacement for for hope you know what what does faith mean to you faith as I was saying, it's like uh, is it trusting without having any evidence or any or any hint that what you're trusting <laughs> exists at all. <laughs> so it's, it's like when my 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 Qigong uh, teacher says that there is this golden light entering through my bones. Okay. Fair enough, you know, I, because, you know, and, and sometimes it's, it's, it's funny, you know, because this is related with the being and doing, you know, I'm noticing a certain quality of certain people, a certain quality of being, which is what gives me faith. You know, my, my yoga teacher, Jorge, is, is blissful, you know, he's is, is a good guy, he's kind, he's loving, he's compassionate, he's caring, you know, he's done such a great work with himself, you know, that I trust that by doing those practices one can get to that place which is what we need in in the world nowadays you know people like him you know and i I'm, and i know more and more people like that you know and is their quality of being rather than what they are doing he is relatively good he's he's quite competent in in in, in chikun but is what i am attracted to and what i what is what is nurturing my faith is seeing how he is or who he is or what he is you know so that's um, that's that's a long explanation for faith. But faith is you trust and you try things that you would not otherwise try, even if science rolls its eyes. Who cares? Do you have an experience of what in other contexts is called God? That is something above the world, uh, a person, a spirit, a uh, do you, do you do you believe in God, Nando? <laughs> um, hmm. uh, I was I was scared by 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 that man, uh, by the old man with uh, with a beard, you know, who is there to judge me, you know, and and therefore I, I when I was a teenager I decided to kill him because I I didn't like the idea of spending my life waiting for him to 
to uh, judge me at the end of my life and condemn me to to hell. And therefore, I I basically did away with with this idea of that God, you know, a person, you know, who knows everything, who's controlling everything in the world, you know, that I don't understand and I don't I don't buy at all. But if we go to the mystery, you know, if we go to these more mystical experiences, if you go to, to many, many experiences in nature or with people uh, where, where you feel this deep connection, where you basically melt, you dissolve into something bigger. You know, it's like if you were an ice cube and, 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 and you are put into water and, and you're there in the water, but your form is not there. I think that thing, whatever you call it, universe, land, uh, energy, love. Yeah, if you call that God, yeah, I think I'm ready to believe in that God, you know, but uh, not, not in the man with the beard, definitely. Before we started, you hinted to me that you are intrigued by opposites now. Mm. And I will simply mention that uh, McGilchrist has a part of his thinking about opposites where the tension between opposites at other parts at opposite ends of a spectrum say it is the tension between them that gives life gives energy to the universe like mm. uh, two pegs that hold a guitar string in mm. tension or uh, the uh, the string on a bow that uh, creates power for an arrow to fly through the air. Um, could you tell us your thoughts about opposites now? Uh, it's, it's funny because I know that simplifications are simplification, are simplistic, you know. Uh, but as I was saying, everything is so complex. Everything is so complicated that in order to make sense, often, as, as you were hinting, uh, the way is, okay, I choose two. I choose two and I explore choosing those two. I mentioned, for instance, love and fear, you know, and I, I can really, really feel in my body the sensation of fear often, often, sometimes, you know, Fortunately, lately is is quite attenuated, you know, and I can feel in my body the sensation of, of love, you know, and I can see that they are in a way opposite, you know, when there is a lot of love, there is little fear, when there is a lot of fear, there is little love, you know, the same, the same thing happens with the mind and the body, you know, the more, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I'm trying now a new practice, which is instead of jumping to, okay, what am I doing today, I, I go to the body, you know. And I try to notice, OK, what was the first thing I did today? Did I breathe out or breathe in, you know, and then I stay in the, in, in the body. So by by using this this opposite, you know, mind, body, love, uh, um, fear, uh, being, doing uh, science, faith helps me explore and find many nuances uh, between the between the two, which in terms of reducing the uncertainty uh, or giving me the impression that I'm less, uh, less uh, confused, it's helpful. It's helpful. You've made many changes in your life. You left a world-class job. You were living in the middle of Europe. Now you've returned to your home in Spain, your original home. Um, how do you feel? Are you are you sad, Nando? Mm, no, you catch me in a good moment, uh, David. Uh, and and you know, impermanence. You know, <laughs> I I was in a in a dark place a few months ago. Now I'm in a very light place. You know, I, I moved back to my birthplace last October. I live 200 meters from my actual birthplace. You know, the clinic, which is now a, a luxurious uh, apartments uh, building. You know. I'm, I'm five meters from the beach and I just uh, bought a plot of land with a small stone cabin and I, I just spent the full day there working, you know, <laughs> I was not doing anything intellectual you know, <laughs> until two hours ago, you know, I've been working in my cabin and, 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 and analyzing the, 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 the ground, trying to find the, to, to decide whether I'm going to plant, you know, lemons, apples, uh, oranges, uh, whatever. And uh, I'm connecting very well with my place and with with the people here. You know, I've, I've connected very well with the local 
green people with the, the yoga club, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, I see more often my family here. I just had my wonderful daughter here for the for the weekend. And uh, yes, I'm in a, in a very good place. Very very happy and and finding my roots after 35 years living in a country which was not mine. And it's very easy to speak Spanish. I realize, you know, when I when I when I go out and I speak my own language, oh, that makes a difference. It sounds like your search for an authentic life is bearing fruit. Mm. Mm, yes, and I, I think my, my my life, which is not interesting or not important, you know, it, but it's, it's a bit of a bridge, you know. I've never fully been what I was supposed to be, you know. I, I, I was... I was a commission official interested in 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 in, in spirituality. I am, uh, you know, I, I was a Spaniard in Belgium, and I'm a Belgian. Uh, <laughs> I am, you know, I'm 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 the country here. You know, people here co call me the, the Belgian, you know, because I spend my life there. So in a way, I spend time with very hippie people, you know, and I I used to be with people with a suit and a tie. I. I'm coming to the conclusion that my role maybe is to be a bridge, you know, to try and, 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 and bridge different worlds. And that's something that I, I try to do in my work also in deep adaptation by, by being an advocate. You know, <laughs> my latest thing is that I've been invited to talk about collapse in the World Happiness Congress, you know. Uh, and I, I think they invited me because I was the director for well-being in the European Commission. And maybe it's going to be a surprise for them to to learn that I'm going to talk about, you know, how can try to be happy without being in denial. So have I managed to be authentic? Maybe, but it's an authenticity which is not based on a coherent way. You know, there are people who have been an activist for 35 years and I've gone from civil servant to post activist without having been an activist, you know, even if I, I was doing my volunteering. So, yes, it's a very specific, very sui generis kind of authenticity that I'm trying to, 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 to build. Some coherence in my incoherence, in a way. Well, thank you for explaining that. Thank you for visiting with me today. It, it sounds in so many ways like a beginning. There are many topics to discuss. Um, we can only scratch the surface in the half an hour that we have. Uh, perhaps you'll return. We can get deeper into some of these topics. Happy to do so. I, thank you and thank everyone who has watched us today. Uh, I'm David Baum in Seattle. This is Collapse Club. Until we meet again, farewell. <laughs>